Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of my podcast all about self-publishing. I am SL Michaels and welcome to the channel. If you are watching to here on YouTube, welcome. I hope that you will uh, interact with me in the comments down below. Let me know where you're listening from, who you are. And if you have any questions right now, I'll be happy to answer any. As always, I like to take this time also to afford just a couple of announcements. Number one, it is my book, The Sinistry. The audiobook is now available on Audible. So if you want to purchase that, you can go to audible.com, look up The Sinistry, and it will be there. In fact, I'm going to post a link down below. And you will be able in the comment section here and you will be able to see it. So if you want to go ahead, you can click on that link and you will be able to purchase the audiobook. The ebook is coming out as well. And also print will be available as well, all from Amazon. If you are more comfortable purchasing from Amazon, please be my guest. And always remember, please leave a good review. If you don't like it, have a bad review, just keep it to yourself. All right. And let's see. And I think that's all the announcements. So let's get into it. Now, this was huge news. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is an April Fool's joke. I have no idea. But I got this actually today. It came up in my news. But Barnes and Noble is disabling Nook ebook purchases on Android. That right there, everybody, is huge because according to um, this, where I got this article, it was um, actually in Google and it's by, let's see, Michael Kol Kolowatsky. Kolowatsky. Uh, Google Play has changed their app developer terms in early 22. They currently charge 15% for the first million dollars in revenue, and this jumps up to 30%. Yada, yada, yada. What does this mean for us? So this means that selling digital content such as audiobooks and ebooks are not financially viable since they have low profit margins. And it's primarily due to companies like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo acting as agents from the publishing house who determine the prices. Barnes & Noble has announced that they will be disabling in-app purchases with the Nook within the Nook app for Android. And they announced this um, today because today is April 2nd. I guess they didn't want to do it on the 1st because people would think this is just uh, an April Fool's joke. But that means that users will no longer be able to buy books through the app. Now, that right there raises some big, big um, questions for me because I am, you know, I buy a lot of books through the Amazon app. My, I buy through uh, my Kindle app, Audible. I buy it through the app as well. Now I have in the past, now this is just for um, Android users. I don't know who uses Android. In fact, that's going to be my question for everybody, do you use an Apple or Android? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Would this, you know, if you are an Android user and you have the Nook to read, if you buy bar the books through the Barnes and Noble app, then you read them through, of course, your you read them through your phone, unless you have your own little Nook uh, reader tablet. But if you just have a, you know, your Android phone and you just, hey, I want to look up you know, my favorite book and I'm going to read it. Not so anymore. You cannot purchase or use this anymore. It is gone. And so that makes me wonder as a self-published author, what does that mean for my, you know, your readers and your buyers? How many people out in the world use an Android? My question though is kind of how many people out there do, do you buy books through Barnes and Noble? That's another question as well. Where do you buy your books from? I would really love to know. Do you buy them through Amazon? Do you even, do you go through Barnes and Noble? Do you go through Kobo? How are, you know, or Google Books? Where do you buy, where, you know, I would really love to know that, 
you know, where do people buy the most books from? What is the big, who is their go-to, who is your go-to books, uh, bookstore, your seller that you buy your books from? It's very, you know, because now it's a little scary. I mean, not too much because I feel for me, and this is just a total, it's just a, a complete total opinion, my personal opinion. Who out, you know, I buy through, I think everybody mainly would buy through Amazon. Amazon is out there for a reason. Number two is Barnes and Noble. So it does kind of make me wonder about that. Would I, if, you know, if half of my, you know, audience, my readers are using Android and they, they can't buy my book, what are they going to do? What does that mean for ebook sales? Because now you can't even purchase it through an Android. And I'm sorry, but no one's going to want to purchase a brand new phone just to read their books. They might, maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll go out and purchase a, a tablet, but I don't know. It really raises that, that question. So now it does say, however, now it does say this, the Nook, Barnes & Noble will release a new version of their app, which will enable consumption only mode customers will enjoy the same curated bookstore they used to but they will no longer be able to make purchases in app okay so this is telling me so what we got here is you can read your books you can read your books but you can't be you cannot make a purchase on that app you cannot buy your book through the app okay so now all right so now we have another problem the other now another thing is all right where how are we going to buy these books you now you have to be out on your computer who in the world sits at their computer their actual laptop desktop to buy a book i'm sorry as and this is coming from me i can say this i am a consumer do you, and i purchase more more than i swear it's 99% of the time I buy my stuff through my phone and I think that's what everybody does because it's quick. It's easy. This is where it's going anyway. You know, it's all going to the apps on our phone, books, audiobooks. We don't sit at our, you know, we don't sit at our computers to read a book. We don't sit or to listen to music or to listen to an audiobook. We are a busy, you know, this is a fast and busy world. And if you don't, and if you don't join it, and if you're not up there, you're going to get left behind. So everybody uses everything on their phone. So it really, so how is this even going to work now? It still raises the question, how is this going to affect us, to me, as self-publishers? It says here, and I will continue. It says they can add titles to their wish list, and the app will advise them to complete their purchase on barnesandnoble.com or a nook reader there you go so you you cannot do the in app you have to go you have to get out of that you have to go you can still buy it on the phone but you got to get out and you got to go to um, barnesandnoble.com through a you know through your either safari or your google whatever mainly but it's got to be google because that's what it's all for a google phone <coughs> sorry and um or you have to have your nook tablet so now you only have to have your tablet and then it's got to go here and there and yonder it is insane everything now it, it, it's no longer just your one shop stopping in app purchase no more and i think it's more just become more of a hassle that's going to be just another thing amazon is going to have over barnes and noble Hi. Hi, Mike. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Please watch the replay. This is a, uh, I, I read this topic and it's uh, pretty, pretty interesting about Barnes and Noble. You can no longer purchase, you cannot make, uh, you cannot make purchases anymore in app. Yep. Yep. Thank you. So, um, so as I was saying, you have to go and you can't, it's not just an easy one-stop thing anymore in the app purchase. You have to, you know, go out, go here and yonder, go all around the world and, 
finally get it back into the app. So Amazon is going to have a, another, that's just another thing of, you know, that comes above everything else showing us with Amazon. Every Amazon is quick. It's fast. It's easy. And I keep saying in this microwave generation that, or not even generation anymore in this microwave world that we're living in, we want it fast. We want it just, we, God forbid we have to, you know, do anything extra. We want it. I mean, and I am pointing it right at me. I wouldn't want to go out and have, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to have to go here, go yonder, go all over the place just to get a book and get it, you know, put into an app. I want to go into my reader. I want to be able to purchase my book. In fact, with Amazon, especially I noticed with Audible, they recommend other books for you, um, audiobooks, and you can purchase it there. Boom, download it. And it's all in one app. I'm not having to go search all over the creation for something or to find, you know, another book like it or an audio book. It's all in the same app. So Barnes and Noble now, they are not allowing this anymore for, and now it is just for Android users. Like I said, if you're an Android user, let me know in the comments down below. Um, do you have an Apple or Android? What do you think of this? Okay, so let's continue with this article. So it says um, you can add titles to their wish list, and the app will advise them to complete yeah, to complete the purchase. As always, a customer's library of digital content syncs between devices and is consumable on any Nook platform. Any prior purchases made from the app will continue to be available in the library. Okay. And it says Barnes & Noble is facing the same situation on Android as they do on an iOS. Close to 10 years ago, Apple changed their policy. So all apps had to use their own billing system. And overnight, all of the major ebook companies disabled the ability to buy ebooks and simply treated them as an e-reading app. In terms of buying digital content via Google Play, Barnes & Noble is simply the first company to disable in-app purchases. Uh, so here we go. Now, here is um, the, it says this able purchases. Here's the tablets that this affects. The Samsung Galaxy Tab for Nook, Nook HD, and the Nook by Len Lenovo. Basically, any Android device sold by the company will no longer be able to purchase digital content through the Nook app. Okay, so if you have those, you will no longer be able to purchase. You can read through the app, the Nook app, but you won't be able to go in and you won't be able to buy your books through the app. Um, I'm not sure how audiobooks work for Barnes & Noble uh, if you have to have a different app. Like I said, I don't use Barnes & Noble. I use Amazon. I use uh, um, Audible and Kindle. So it I, it may not affect too much. It, it may not because I really don't think a lot of people, but like I said, you know, you can prove me wrong, you know, you know, tell me, but I don't think as being a consumer myself, I don't think a lot of people use uh, Barnes and Noble. I think we all, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty much safe to say we all use Amazon. I mean, and it's for everything, books, audiobooks, any kind of purchases you want to make, a computer, whatever. However, I do go to QVC for my purchases for electronics because they have called Easy Pay, and um, yeah, they use Easy Pay for that, and I can do it like it's kind of like layaway. <laughs> and this is not sponsored. I love QVC by the way, and so does my mother. <laughs> so it and so now it continues on to say, uh, Radikin, a Japanese company, which is also we know as of course Kobo. Uh, the website, they have announced that they have disabled in-app transactions. They announced this on the 28th of March, just, you know, a few days ago. And But this only affects the Japanese app. Kobo will continue to support in-app transactions globally for the foreseeable future. Now, I saw that and there was another, um, I saw it. And that was a different uh, article. But I was reading about, okay, so they said Audible. Where does Audible fit into this? All right. So with Audible, they say they have continued to follow suit. Now, this is on Android. I will be very, very shocked to find out. 
seriously, really, if they have, because if they have, I really think you're shooting yourself in the foot if you are doing that. You have to, because like I said, it was just, it's so, it's just so much easier to be able to have the in-app purchases. You don't have to go out and, like I said, go hither and yonder looking for what, you know, a book, an audio book or ebook, whatever. So, um, I'm trying to find it. Okay. So this was by ebook. Okay. So now they're saying the same thing. Um, audible is following suit. Um, you are no longer able, uh, regarding, uh, devices of regarding payments. So we, um, you know, as the users will no longer be able to purchase ebooks on Audible. That I had no clue that um, I've never really thought that Audible app did ebooks as well. They so far have not, from what I've seen. I use Audible like every day. I love listening to my audiobooks when I'm relaxing and just, you know, whatever I'm doing, I love listening to them. So, but, um, but they say you can no longer purchase book ebooks as well through audible okay i'm very like but that's only through the of course through the um, android system it says apple has a similar policy both tech giants have been criticized for these policies because of the app store tax um, epic games took apple in fact court to change this policy the video game company almost won but due to a last minute stay on an injunction Apple got to keep its policy of forcing developers to use its system. And so they said um, Google did the same thing. Now, like I said, this could be, guys, this could be a total, total April Fool's joke. However, this came out on the 2nd. So I am really quite sure this is not it. It says users will lose the ability to purchase audiobooks on the Audible app on April 4th of this year. Oh boy. Okay. So now I have a feeling what they're going to be doing is probably the same thing. If users don't update the apps, they would still be able to buy eBooks, but the experience may not be as good as the of the latest version. Oh boy. I think we're going to hold oh, no, We're going to have us a problem here on the audible app. Premium members will still be able to purchase audiobooks with credits and buy okay so i do get the credits i i am with that but it says and buy additional credits on the audible and nook apps users will be able to add titles to their wish list and have full access okay so here's what it is it all has to do with the money transactions here we go guys here it goes you are not able to make purchases uh, Nook does not do anything like that. They don't offer credits or none of that. That's strictly money. So in that app, you cannot make a purchase. You cannot do it. Audible, you are not going to be able to pay money for this audiobook. What you're going to have to do is use credits. You can buy credits and then purchase the books. I have been seeing a lot of credits. Um, somehow I get, because I am a member, a prime member with Audible, they um, offer me like, I think this month I got three, three free credits for being a member. So I was able to download, I get like three free audiobooks. One time I had like 10 odd, 10 credits saved up. I really wasn't sure what this was all about. So you get to keep, you, you just pay through credits and that's how you get paid. You get your audiobooks through that app. So all that to say this, I... I don't know what this means for us as self-publishers or even for audiobooks, but um, that's what is in the news. And I think if people really want to support Barnes and Noble, they would do it. I, I, I think they, they would. I mean, you have really no choice. Yes, it is a headache. Yes, it's extra steps. I'm not sure what how people would do it what they what they would think of or you know because I I know a lot of people don't want to do extra steps they want to go straight to it I put out um last last month I had ads out on Facebook for my book I hadn't had an audiobook I have it on my website you can purchase the synesty you can purchase my audiobook and 
the ebook on Audible. Not Audible. You can push you can purchase it on my on my website. Well, I have it there, but the thing is now nobody and I told people go here and I would get them there, but they did not want to click on buy now because the buy now will you can't buy strictly through my website. You got to go to Payhip. But there was so many extra steps. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody cared. They didn't want to do this. So it's just because it's extra steps. If you have Amazon and you set up that little link, they click on it, boom, you're sent to Amazon. It's something that people trust and that they will buy. So people want easy. They want, you know, fast, easy comfort. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. So it just kind of makes me wonder how many people will stick to their Barnes and Noble and how this affects us is, is it, should we still continue to publish our eBooks our e and audiobooks through, uh, through Barnes and Noble for Amazon? Um, I'm not really sure people, it just kind of depends if you want to purchase credits, just purchase credits. You can still do it. You, it's still available to you to do that you know, so it, it just, it's just kind of a, it's just a system. It's just a payment system. That's all it is. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of this? Is this something that you think will hinder Barnes and Noble? Are you still going to um, publish through Barnes and Noble? What do you think about for audiobooks? Do you think this is something that people, do you think the credit thing will work? Do you think people will still want to buy audiobooks that way? Will they, you know, I don't want to say, I mean, people get it, they'll understand it, but will they want to do it in, in that form in that way? Let me know in the comments below. Also, um, let me know also Apple or Android. Let me know the big battle, Coke, Pepsi, Apple or Android, Star Trek, Star Wars. So just let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this episode of all things self-publishing please subscribe to the channel if you have not you can subscribe here on my youtube channel or you can subscribe to the podcast channel here on spotify or at anchor and um, also my book as i said before my book is out and it is available on amazon.com the synesthete you can purchase the ebook i mean not well you can purchase the ebook at uh, amazon but also the audiobook on audible thank you guys so much i hope you have a great day and remember continue to write on guys Bye.